Hello there to all you leaders out there. Um, we're going to uh, dive into another training here from Developing the Leader Within You by John Maxwell in just a moment. But before we do, uh, I just want to take a moment and say that um, I really appreciate with all my heart uh, every single one of you and what you all do. Um, and uh, uh, it's been way too long that we've met on a one-on-one -on -one basis um, and uh, and as a group. And so in the upcoming uh, days, months, um, days, weeks, and months, uh, I would like to have the chance to meet with um, each of you one-on-one -on -one and uh, just discuss how things are going and, and how you feel the direction of the ministry is going and maybe some things you'd like to see take place. Um, and uh, just kind of pick your brain and, and get some insight from you because uh, I want this to be a ministry where uh, we enjoy serving, where we don't uh, dread coming on a Wednesday night. We don't uh, see it as a obligation, uh, but we see it as a privilege, and that's what it really is. Um, so I'm looking forward to that, and uh, in the next uh, in the next day or two here, I'll be uh, emailing you some dates uh, that we'll look to get together as a group and uh, do some more interacting and training and, and uh, just getting together and, and talking about the direction of the ministry coming up here in the next year, uh, two, three years, uh, if possible. So it's some great stuff that's going to be coming up, and uh, I just want to take a moment and say that um, I appreciate every single one of you. and. The only reason the youth ministry is successful, the only reason we can accomplish great things for the kingdom, and the only reason our kids grow closer to the Lord is all of you. Um, it's not me. It's, it's never the youth pastor. It's always um, the leaders that make the ministry happen. Um, sure, I do some things, but it's not about me because there will be a day where I will move on from here and uh, there'll be another person that comes. And um, the one thing that is always changing in youth ministry is uh, who's behind the pulpit. But the one thing, if we can keep it from happening, the one thing that shouldn't really change much are those um, that are the leaders. Uh, the more consistency we can keep with the leaders, the better. And of course, the more consistency we can keep with the youth pastor, also the better. Um, but uh, I wanted to let you guys know that I really appreciate everything you do. So grateful for it and um, looking forward to the great things coming up in the next few months. But let's get into some, some training here uh, real quick uh, this afternoon. Uh, we're we're going to cover three uh, of what are called the l levels of le le leadership. Uh, we're going to cover three of them. Uh, uh, for our time this afternoon, and then we'll cover the other two uh, when we meet the next time. So um, they all start with a P, so it's very easy to remember. Um, but the first three that we're going to cover are position. That's number one. That's the first level. Number two is 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 uh, permission. So number two is permission. Number three is production. So those are the three. Then the other two. Uh, are people development and personhood. People development and personhood. So the first three we're going to cover uh, today in our time together, uh, and hopefully we'll get through them, and hopefully it will be a blessing to you. And again, this is from John Maxwell, Developing the Leader Within You. Uh, and so the first level uh, is position. Uh, this is the basic entry of leadership. Uh, this is the place where the only influence you have is just because uh, you have a certain title or you have a name. Uh, and, of course, there are people who, uh, when they are, are told they're under you, um, they're told maybe that if they want to you know, keep their job, they have to report to you now. Or if they want to be a part of this group, then they have to obey uh, you now. And this one is tough because... Uh, you can come into a position, and sure, you're the leader, but you're not really sure where everybody else is. You don't know if they're happy about you being the leader. You don't know if they're going to um, want to go in the direction that you're going. And and uh, it all depends on how the last 
person who was the leader left and you know they're wondering are you going to be the same and so this is tough um, but it's the entry level because even if you don't have anybody there who uh, enjoys you or who likes you or who's crazy about you being a leader uh, by the uh, order and 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 uh, command or 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 by the designation of the company you're the leader so that's what it is so uh, it is entry level and uh, people though uh, who stay at this level get all caught up into territorial battles and uh, protocol and tradition and uh, and organizational charts and you know they're really in it um, uh, to to show everyone where they are and they kind of use their their position to lord over other people and we don't want to do that uh, a person may be in control because he has uh, uh, he's been appointed a position and in that position he or she may have authority uh, but really real leadership is more than having authority uh, it's more than having technical training and it's more than having um, the ability to follow procedures uh, and protocols and tradition. Um, real, le real l l leadership is knowing the difference between being a leader and being a boss. Um, and I thought this was really great when I heard it. The boss drives his workers. The leader coaches them. The boss, he depends or she depends on authority. The leader depends on goodwill. The boss inspires kind of this terror or he he uses his position to make people uh, scared the leader inspires um, joy and enthusiasm and 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 confidence and those kind of emotions the boss says I the leader says we the boss uh, he repairs the blame for the breakdown but the leader he repairs the breakdown of course, the boss knows uh, how, how it's done, but the leader shows how it's done. And last, the boss says go, but the leader says let's go. The leader always is looking to take somebody along with him or her. So what are the characteristics of a positional leader? Remember, this is the first level of leadership, but we don't want to stay here. Uh, but what's the, what are, are, are some characteristics? First, security is based on title and not talent based on title and not talent. The story is told of a private in World War I uh, who shouted on the battlefield to a guy he saw standing uh, across the field. Uh, he shouted to put out that match. And, uh, and, and only uh, he discovered that when the guy turned around, it was this general, Black Jack Pershing, that he just yelled at to put out his match. And when the private uh, discovered it was him, of course... He feared severe punishment, and he tried to stammer out his apology. Uh, and then uh, while he was trying to do that, General Pershing patted him on the back and said, That's all right, son. Just be glad I'm not a second lieutenant. The point should be clear that the higher the position's level of true ability and the resulting influence, the more, the more secure and, and confident the person becomes. So this level is often gained by by appointment you're given it uh, and when you get it when you get this this um, level of ability and and resulting influence uh, the more secure and and uh, confident the person becomes but we don't want to stay here we don't want to stay here because people will not want to have uh, a person lead them that just uses their authority it's like when, you're, when your parents, uh, when you were a kid, your parents would tell you, or maybe now you're a parent, you tell your kids, uh, they say, you know, you say you're grounded, or you say turn off the TV, or you say go to your room, or you say do your homework, and they're like, well, why? You're like, well, because I said so, or because I'm the parent. Like, it's like, that only goes for so long. Um, you know, your kids want, after a while, some sort of explanation, and even though you may not see that they need one because you're the parent and they're the kid, uh, they're only going to deal with that for a while and then they're going to um, obey you 
because you're their parent, but not because they respect you. And then it'll move from them not really obeying you at all because they don't respect you. And the same is with a positional leader. If you simply use your position and your authority, hey, do that. Hey, sit down. You know, you're talking to students and you're yelling at them. Hey, you know, hey, listen up. Hey, shut up. You know, you know, you're dealing with students. You're doing whatever, and you're using your your position as a leader, uh, as an adult leader, um, to to try and 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 use that to twist their arm or to get them to do something. That's only going to last a while, and then uh, after a while, they're going to stop respecting uh, you and me because. Uh, we don't show a care for them. We simply want them to obey us because of our position. So let's not get wrapped up in, in, in positions. It's not about position. Uh, it's about people. And uh, the real leader discovers that it's not about position. It's about people. Uh, we don't have time to worry about who, who's, who's doing what and who has what position and, and, and all that junk. It's, we, we need to work, be, be concerned about people. Um, people who are under a leader that tries to use uh, his or her position uh, to 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 use that as you know as their power uh, they'll only do what they have to do when they're required to do it they won't go the extra mile they won't put an extra effort um, they'll just do what they have to do and that's it uh, they're always kind of having this low morale it's always present on the team and when the leader lacks lacks his or her confidence, then those under uh, him or her lose their commitment. So uh, the leader, be, you know, he, he or she becomes less confident, and the people they they lose their commitment. They're like the boy who was asked by Billy Graham. This is a great story. How to find the nearest nearest uh, post office? And so uh, the boy told Mr. Graham where the nearest post office was, and. And, uh, and and so Dr. Graham, he, he thanks the boy and he says, Now, boy, if you come to the convention arena tonight, uh, I'll be telling everyone how to get to heaven. And uh, the boy says, I don't, I don't think I'll be coming tonight. Uh, you don't even know your way to the post office. So it's so great um, how we need to make sure we know where we're going, we have direction, and uh, that we move beyond the level of, of, uh, of position. So that's number one. Number two, number two is permission. So number two is permission. Uh, and, and at this level, uh, Fred Smith says about this level, who's a leadership guru, he says that leadership is getting people to work for you when they're not obligated. People to work for you when they're not obligated. They're not punching the clock exactly on time. Actually, they're not in their chair looking at the last minutes to go down, and then you know they grab their coat, they punch their clock, and they're gone uh, in less than uh, than uh, two minutes. You know, out of the building, and uh, they're squealing around the corner. They can't wait to leave. You don't want people like that. You want people. Uh, you want to leave people in a way that uh, they want to go the extra mile. They don't mind putting in you know another hour or so. They don't mind giving up their time. To go on a retreat, they don't. They don't mind it. They don't see it as difficult because they don't see you as a leader uh, who 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 oppresses them or uses his or her authority to overpower them or any of those things. So uh, you want to be a, a person that gets people to work for you because they want to, uh, even when they're not obligated. Leadership begins with the heart, not the head. Uh, it it begins with the heart, not the head. And it, 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 its goal and what it thrives on is developing m meaningful relationships, uh, not getting into regulation and, and protocol and, and these kinds of things. Leaders on the position level uh, often lead by intimidation. And they're like these chickens that this Norwegian uh, guy studied. He was a doctor. Uh, his name was T... Shedjalup Eb. That name I'm not going to say anymore, so I'm just going to call him Eb. All right, because the name it's it's messing me up. So this guy he was a he was a, a a Norwegian scientist. He studied these chickens, and in studying these uh, these these uh, uh, these 
these uh, chickens, he ended up developing what is known as the pecking order uh, that we use to describe all types of social gatherings. So uh, what happened was uh, he found that in any flock, um, there's usually one hen that uh, is over all the others. This hen is the one that is dominant, and this hen can peck every other hen without ever being pecked uh, her, herself or in return. Second comes a hen that pecks um, all other hens except the one at the top. And then the rest are arranged in this hierarchy that descends. And then you end up at the bottom with one hapless hen that gets pecked by all the others and can't peck anybody in return. Uh, and so in contrast to the position model, uh, the, the, the uh, permission level um, uh, involves um, or is, is led by in, inter, interrelationships. So what happens is the agenda is not the pecking order, but people development. Uh, it's not it's not big on uh, on the pecking order or on some sort of, some sort of um, organizational chart, but it's on people development. Um, on this level, time and energy are placed on the individual needs and desires of the people. You don't get caught up in in the fact that you're the leader, but you look more towards the people. Um, and, uh, and you look to meet their needs and desires. For example, um, there's a story uh, of Henry Ford found in this guy, Amitai, Ed, Amitai Edzioni. He wrote this book, Modern, modern uh, Businesses, Modern Companies, Organizations. And uh, he explains the story of Mr. Ford. He says, he says about him, he made the perfect car. It was the Model T. And this ended the need for any other car. He was totally product oriented. He wanted to fill the world with Model T cars. But when people started coming to him and saying, Mr. Ford, we, Mr. Ford, we'd like a different color, he remarked, you can, have a, you can have any color you want as long as it's black. And at that point in time, uh, the, the company began to decline. People who are unable to build solid, lasting relationships will soon discover that they're unable to sustain long-lasting relationships. Mr. Ford forgot it was about people. He forgot it was about the people he was building the car for. See, we can't be more about the service and the agenda and those kinds of things than about the students. And this is what I struggle with sometimes too because I have my order of service every week and I'm watching the clock and I'm wondering how are the transitionings going and stuff. And I can become more about running a service. I can be more worried about running a service than about the the students, the people. And, you know, are they hearing from the Lord? Are they understanding what's happening in this moment? And so... Uh, it's got to be about people development and people than than it is um, about agendas or or companies or businesses or, or or the bottom line or you know whatever it is. So make sure we keep it about people, but we want to make sure that we are moving from the from the position level to the permission level. Then after permission, we lead we 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 move to production. So level three. Our last level for today is production. On this level, things begin to happen. Good things. Profit increases. Morale is high. Turnover is low. Needs are being met. Goals are realized. Problems are solved with little effort. And everyone is results oriented. So what does this look like for you and I? This is a great level to be at for the youth ministry. Let's translate it over into youth ministry terms. So on this level, uh, good things happen. So profit increases, meaning we increase in students, we increase in offering, uh, we increase in adult leaders, we increase in, in students who sign up for m ministries, we develop new ministries. Morale is high. All right, the students are excited to be here. They don't. They're not drug here. They're telling their parents they want to come. They're bringing others along with them. And while they're here, they're engaged. They're not texting the whole time. They're not talking the whole time. Uh, but they, uh, they are here and they can't wait to get here and they don't want to leave. 
turnover is low. We're not losing students. They're not coming and saying, nobody said hi to me. This place is boring. There's a low turnover of students. There's a low turnover. There is a low turnover of adult leaders. Once adults get, get on board, they want to be here. They want to stay. They love working with us. N needs are being met. We are able to meet the needs of our students. Spiritually, relationally, emotionally, we're meeting their needs. We're understanding their needs and we're meeting them. Goals are realized. So we're discovering new goals. We are able to meet old goals or goals that we previously set. And we're developing new goals. Uh, so we're always staying goal initiated. Problems are solved with little effort. Behavioral problems, um, uh, schedule problems, interpersonal relationship problems between students, they're solved easily. Uh, maybe maybe a, a, a staff relationship problem is solved easily. There's a miscommunication. There's a problem that happened. That gets resolved easily, and everyone is results-oriented. We're not all about results. Um, we're not simply here just to get a 200-person a, a youth ministry. We're here to minister to the students, but everyone is results-oriented, and we keep those kingdom mind of results. So what are the results that we want to see according to the kingdom? Souls saved and students discipled. It's simple. I want students to come experience the love of Jesus Christ, encounter his love, and receive it, uh, and uh, invite uh, Christ into their life as Lord, and then we want to disciple them. Everything else uh, goes under those two goals. Um, and so we become results oriented because we want to see those things happen. All right. Um, so that's how we're results oriented. On the relationship level, people get together just to get. On the relationship level, people come together just to get together. They don't really have any other objective or, or any other goal. They just come together to hang out. But on the results level, people come together to accomplish a purpose. On the results level, they come together to accomplish a purpose. So we come together Wednesday nights, not to just hang out with the students, although that's part of it, not to just hang out with, with each other, although we should be learning to hang out uh, more with each other and getting to know each other as leaders. Uh, but we come together on Wednesday night to accomplish a purpose. And it's not just to run a service. It's that we can give the love of God away to our students and so that we can um, show them that Christ uh, has a purpose for them and has life and has hope for them. and So it's more than just having a service, but we come together. On the relationship level, people love to get together to accomplish uh, something, some, some task, some goal. And actually, on this relationship level, it's weird because um, something happens when you're in the presence of other people that doesn't really always happen when you're by yourself. A lot of people say I'm not creative, I'm not you know, innovative, I don't have a great imagination, uh, but you put all those people together and in the group, uh, their, their ideas blossom, their ideas um, are, 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 are great, they're creative, they're original, they're, they're new. Um, and it's interesting because by themselves, it's almost like the people convince themselves, I'm not creative and I don't have anything to offer. But when they come together in the group, it's incredible what happens from what in, and what comes from these people who just um, earlier said that they weren't creative. And so it's almost like a character played by Jack Nicholson, uh, who, uh, while he was in this restaurant uh, in this movie called Five Easy Pieces, he's in this restaurant. And he's told that he can't get this side order of toast. Uh, and so he comes up with this imaginative solution to the problem. First, he orders a chicken salad sandwich on toast. Then he instructs the waitress, uh, no mayonnaise but butter and hold the chicken. So he basically ends up ordering a side of toast. Uh, he 86 is the uh, mayonnaise and 86 is the chicken, for those of you who understand the uh, serving language uh, 86 means that you don't want it so he gets creative uh, and he gets his side piece of toast and so w when we come together in this production level uh, if you're at this production level of leadership 
um, what happens is that you see among those you're leading um, that you're getting results, that things are happening, and uh, creativity is beginning to develop, and 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 you're getting uh, new ideas, and your goal uh, goal uh, you're you're aware of goals, and you're result oriented, and so. Now, I pray that these three first levels of leadership um, have been a blessing to you. And maybe you can identify right now where you are in this leadership level. There are two more that we've not done, uh, and that is people development and personhood. But maybe you'd say, you know what, I, I'm a positional leader. And, uh, and you know, maybe you would just uh, take a moment to pray, Lord God, help me to move away from being just a positional leader. Everyone is a positional leader for a short season, but we want to move out of that. Maybe you are, you are in this permission level um, where you've moved from uh, from from being positional to permission now, uh, and maybe uh, you are now. Your prayer is, Lord, move me from 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 this permission to production. I pray that we would all be leading at the level of production, uh, and I pray for the production level uh, to increase uh, within our team of leaders here Um, and uh, of course we want to go to the highest level of leadership but being at production is a great place to be we don't stop there but maybe you're at maybe you're at position or permission my prayer for you today is that you would get to a place where you take the steps it requires to get to be uh, on this production level of leadership uh, I love you all so much. Care about you so much. I appreciate you so much. I thank you taking. Um, I I appreciate you taking your 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 time to watch this uh, short training. And next time we'll get into these uh, other two levels of leadership, and then we'll move on uh, to some more comments from from developing the leader within you that we're going through. My prayer is also uh, to to uh, order a copy of this book for each and every one of you and even the workbook, uh, so that you can work through it uh, on your own, and um, maybe even just have it. Um, I have the workbook with me. Um, I lost my copy of the book, so I downloaded a copy on my tablet, but um, it's great to go through these things uh, every three months, every six months, just reevaluate how you're doing with being a leader, Um, especially uh, if you are a person who, who you are a leader at your work. Um, you know, your job is heavy on leadership. The, you, that might not be the case with you, but even if you're not a leader at your job, then you're a leader in your home. Uh, and if you're not married, then you, you lead yourself. So you're still a leader. And you, you, of course, are a leader here at the church, which is very important and super special. So I'm praying for you uh, that the Lord would, would uh, daily increase our quality of leadership. Thanks so much. and hope you guys uh, have a blessed rest of your day.